Good morning, friends. Pastor Pete here at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. It's so great to see you and uh, have a chance to break bread. Maybe today, I don't know, we're going to have coffee. We always have coffee because it's coffee with Pete. And I mentioned breaking bread because, uh, well, it's the 13th of April, 2022, and we're in the week before Easter. We're in Holy Week, and breaking bread is something that happened during that time, during the Last Supper, there was a breaking of bread that leads us to communion, what we know as communion today. So I say, well, maybe we'll break bread. Uh, I love it when we get together because we sometimes have more than coffee, breakfast or a, a snack or, yeah, a cookie or something. But grab your coffee, get your Bible open to Matthew 26, and uh, we just want to talk about Holy Week, talk about Passover and communion, and yeah, let's do that. So grab your coffee. So there's this scene that happens. It's in Matthew 26. And I'll read the scripture to you in a, in a couple of minutes. But what ha- is happening is that Jesus uh, in this in the final week of his life is then saying, we're going to have Passover. Uh, because it was time for that. The time of Passover had come. And uh, it's not the first time. He's 30-something years old, 33 years old or however, and had celebrated Passover many times. In fact, there's... During many of the festivals, we know that Joseph and Mary and Jesus went to Jerusalem because there were oftentimes pilgrimages were called for the Jewish people to come to Jerusalem to the temple to partake in the festival. Sometimes we talk about the feast of Passover, but the true rendering maybe of that word would be festival. So it's not necessarily always a huge food event as much as it is just a big community celebration and a, a commemoration and a remembrance. And so Passover... Uh, one of the, the feasts or festivals of the Lord that were commanded. And this was the first one, actually. Uh, the Jewish people during Passover, boy, this is a real tight nutshell here. The Jewish nation, the Jewish people during Passover are remembering and commemorating when God delivered them from bondage as slaves in Egypt. And you know the story. Probably almost every person in America knows the story of their exodus, of their the leaving and the plagues and everything and them leaving and the God parting the Red Sea. Uh, you know, if you've seen the Ten Commandments with Moses, that's the beginning of the whole thing. So the Passover component of that uh, was that God said to them, to the entire Jewish nation, each of you, each home, take the lamb, take a lamb, a spotless lamb, and sacrifice it and take the blood from that sacrificed lamb and use it to mark the doorpost over top and along the sides of the door to your home. And then stay inside. And when the Spirit of the Lord, the angel, passes over or through the through the city, those that have the markings of the lamb, sacrificial, sacrificed lamb, will be saved. They will be uh, not caused to have the plagues. In fact, death will not visit them was really the key. They're going to be set free. Everybody inside that house would be set free. And so that led to, that happened, and then it led to them when they left, and they had this exodus that they went on. And we know it went on for 40 days and 40 not or 40 years, I should say, not 40 days, 40 years in the wilderness. But it led to them going to the promised land. So there was always this promise of what was going to happen. So this that's what the Passover was. That's what the Passover still is to Jews. But to those, in those days... Jesus, being Jewish, as were his followers, uh, they they took that they're going to celebrate the festival just as everybody else was. And of course, he was in Jerusalem at that time. He had come in on Palm Sunday. He had come into to Jerusalem and said, "We're going to celebrate." So, if I pick up chapter twenty six out of Matthew, verse seventeen, let me read you the beginning, and then we'll skip over and we'll read some more about what happened then. So it says this, on the first day of unleavened bread, unleavened bread meaning another festival, it happens coincidental with, coinciding with Passover. The first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? So they knew that they, hey, he's he, Jesus doesn't have a home to be in. And it's customary for us all to be in homes, but all of us are away from our homes. Where would you want us to make arrangements for that? Because we need to celebrate this in a certain way. Because there's a ceremonial uh, process that they go through. There's actually 15 elements 
of celebrating what's called the Seder dinner, the Seder meal that they do annually. And so they needed to find a place. So Jesus says in verse 18, he says, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover, meaning that they uh, set the table a certain way, and they prepared certain foods in certain ways. Uh, and they probably had a crew bigger than just the disciples. They probably had others that were in their entourage uh, participating and joining and doing all of that. So they went ahead and they had the meal. And, and uh, let me skip ahead to, to uh, verse 26. It says this, it's about the Lord's Supper, but it says, As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, Take and eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So there's a whole lot to unpack there. But basically, it's the first picture of the first communion. And Jesus is saying, you know, when we sit down together for Passover, we are remembering the redemption that God provided for us. He's saying it, but they also say it. The Jews had been saying it every year. They had been remembering every year since that original miraculous redemption. It's now commanded of them. God says, every year you should remember this. You should hold, hold this ceremonial festival. And you, in, your, in your homes, you should celebrate it with this very impactful and very solemn and rejoicing meal. And do it every year. And keep alive the remembrance of the redemption that I sent for you. Now we have Christ with his followers pointing to himself as the new means of the true and final and complete redemption. The people had been not only celebrating the redemption God had given to the nation, setting them free from the bondages that they were in as slaves, they also had a hope for the Messiah. And these people who were following Jesus had come to understand he is the Messiah. And so now he's telling them, this is, this, when I break this bread, like we would break bread in a, in, a, uh, in a Passover meal, I'm telling you my body will be broken, that I will be given up for you. And that when we take the wine, which by the way, there are multiple breads and wines, four cups of wine in a Seder meal, each sig signifying a different aspect of the redemption and the promises of God. He's saying... My blood represents the things that you long for in the wine. The restoration of the kingdom, the coming of the Savior. My blood represents that wine that you drink of. So drink this wine and then when you do remember that my blood will be spilled to actually accomplish the things that you look for symbolically in the wine. And so Christ is giving us communion now. And he says that each time you celebrate communion. You, you are basically remembering the sacrifice that I'm giving, that, that the redemption that is coming through me should be remembered as well. That the redemption is coming through me is now and forever, and you'll be set free from the bondage of your sins. So you were once set free from the bondage of slavery to Egyptians, but now you're set free from the bondage of sins that holds your life back. And let me also just as a paraphrase or a parenthesis to go with this, it talked about these were the first days of unleavened bread. And that festival goes along with the festival of Passover. And it really relates to cleaning out the bread loaf, taking out the bad leaven, the bad stuff, and, and infusing new into it, new life into it. It talks about cleansing us. It's, it's a remembering that we need to have sin cleaned from our lives. And we will be empowered to live out this new life that we have because we've been redeemed in Christ. They go together perfectly. But I just want to give that to you here in Holy Week. It's Easter coming up. Uh, we sometimes read that passage and just kind of skip over. Oh, Passover, that's at the same time as Easter. And we don't actually put together the fact that Christ was giving us a way to remember 
a means, a simple meal with bread and wine, not too different actually than the simple meal, a Seder meal with bread and wine and other elements. But he simplified it down like usual, bread and wine, my body and my blood, both given for you. And then the last thing I'll tell you, and this may be for a whole nother time, he talks about he's not going to drink the wine again until he does it in the kingdom. That's because later he has to take, he says it in the garden, he says, that may this cup pass from me. It's, the, it's one of the Seder cups is the cup of God's wrath. And it's usually poured out. It's usually not taken. It's usually dumped out. But Christ says, take this cup from me, but your will be done. And he actually drinks the wrath of God. Again, symbolic in another day uh, for that. God, Christ does it all for us. And I just want to bless you this day. I want to give you every reason to believe that Jesus has done a final work and that your redemption uh, is in him and it's complete. And it's good to remember. So I encourage you to be in church on Sunday and to partake of communion and um, just to live your life in a way that you know you've been set free from sin by the mighty works of Jesus. It's in his name I pray these blessings for you. Amen.